Thank you, Enrico. I think I'll uh, invite our next group of amazing poets tonight, and uh, I believe they're all in your program, and <clears throat> the first one will be someone that many of us all know with the uh, Pandora's Collective that have put on many events throughout the town for at least the last dozen years I can think of. Bonnie, Mitt, Bonnie Nish, where are we sitting? There we are. <laughs> Bonnie Nish is a local poet and expressive artist therapist. And she is pursuing a PhD in language and literacy education and believes in the power of poetry and it brings to building community. So, Bonnie, you'd like to come up? And I'm sure she has one of her books with her. Thank you, Bernice, and thank you, Duke, for inviting me. It means a lot to me to be here. Um, I'm going to read two poems today. The first one actually came out of my master's thesis, and the second one came out of a paper I wrote for my PhD. Um, Love and Bones, which is my book, first book of poetry, came out of my master's thesis, which was um, primarily about my family and the Holocaust. And I think in order to have peace, we need to remember these things from the past. My mother used to tell us all the time how my great-grandparents in Poland um, died together before the war when they were asphyxiated in their house when their gas, their gas stove leaked one night. And it was never lost on us that they were lucky to go together because they obviously would have been separated and gone in the gas chambers. And that stayed with my mother and that has in some way come down to me. Love and bones. Pulling bones, pounding veins into powder, my mother's blue twisted hands wrap around fish dough, sizzle a ball after ball drops into water. Her triangular body dances between counter and stove, blood red hair bobs over steaming pot. She screams to Aunt Betty for salt to stir more salt. As I lie under the metallic table, listen to life being crushed into Passover dinner. Fish guts and sweat fill my nostrils, blanket me as I doze in the comfort of the hustle and bustle of the afternoon. At night, my mother exhausted, body clumped into the sofa, knees pulled up into a sagging breast, a fish ball crumbling. The stench of death still wrapped around her praying hands, closed eyes rummaged through a turbulent history, bubbling deep inside her. She moves from one end of a bad dream to another, the death camps, the family carcasses piled against a wall of stories told over time, pull at her frail bones. Memories burned into each family ritual fall below the mind's surface, in the dark, she reaches into thin air, twisted blue hands searching, desperately trying to wake up. The second piece came from a paper I wrote as a response to six of my favorite po poets. The f this poem came out of a response to uh, Naomi Shaib Nye, who is an American Lebanese poet and writes a lot about her experience as a Lebanese American. Um, and I'm just going to read this and then I'll go into the poem. During her interview, Shai Nye's statement about the irrational behavior of political leaders ends with an antidote about Palestinian writers who once, dis and I quote, discussed with me the difficulty of writing personal poems in the shadow of larger communal issues. The statement addresses the disappointment that some people feel when they find that her poetry is not strong enough it's in its condemnation of political leaders when she writes personal poems instead of anti-war diatribes. 
The answer goes back to the poet's belief in the power of poetry to transform. When journalists asked her after September 11th, why do you suppose that people are finding strength in poetry now? She tells them, as a direct line to human feeling, empathetic experience, genuine language, and detail, poetry is everything that headline news is not. It takes us inside situations, helps us, helps us imagine life from more than one perspective, honors in imagery and metaphor, those great tools of thought and deepens our confidence in meaningful world. Poetry provides people with the tools to recreate experience. It does not change the experience, but it makes empathy possible, it allows people to understand their feelings and those of, those of, of others, which is why in her poetry, Shaib Nye continues to write about the Arabs she knows and loves, not the ones who blow up buildings my response. A Jew sits at a computer screen wearing a hat, listening to rain. An Arab po poet she has never met recites poetry, her stories, the missing of the homeland held on the page for her aching fa Lebanese father who plants fig trees in a Texas yard. We both wear masks to hide the horror of displacement the dust of her narrations circling through our blood. She is caught between worlds, and I am a Jew who doesn't know the complexity of the history that has landed us here. My father, like hers, was hated, not for the color of his skin, but his name, like his, like hers, his faith. My father, like hers, planted his love, sprouting words and children, he listened to the storms that approached with fear. Fathers on the other side of the world sing for their children, as the poet and I sing for our fathers. Not all men carry guns, bring terror. It is only the mad warrior who carries the bomb. A poet's heart can change his identity, give him a flower bed to lie in with his lover. The poet has signed off I hold her worry and love. Tonight, a Palestinian and Jew held conference. It's only a matter of time before we begin to believe what is written, what is said, what is heard. Thank you.